Thomas King is a best-selling and an award-winning writer. He has been honored with a Governor General's Literary Award for Fiction and the RBC Taylor Prize for his nonfiction work, The Inconvenient Indian. A companion of the Order of Canada and the recipient of an award from the National Aboriginal Achievement Foundation, Thomas King lives in Guelph, Ontario. He is here to share his recollection of what inspired him to write his 1993 short story, Borders, which has now been adapted into a graphic novel illustrated by Natasha Donovan. Hi, I'm Thomas King, and I'm the author of the uh, short story, soon to be a graphic novel called Borders. Uh, Borders was one of the early short stories that I wrote in my writing career. And it came about in a number of interesting ways. So one was, uh, I was out in Lethbridge, Alberta. I was teaching at the University of Lethbridge Native Studies. And uh, a couple of the guys who played uh, on a native basketball league came into my office and uh, tried to second me to play basketball because I was tall. Uh, I told them I was a lousy basketball player. They didn't care. They just wanted another body to throw out there and uh, take five fouls before I fouled out of the game. And, uh, and you know, uh, it was camaraderie and community. And so I said, sure, I'd go with them. And so we used to go around the countryside playing uh, basketball in this very large native basketball league that went from Canada down into the States. And every time we had to uh, go across the border into the States, of course, we had to uh, go through the border guards and the, and the customs, uh, security, whatever. And this was way back before 9-11 or anything else before security really got tight. But even then, uh, on occasion, uh, we'd get hassled. You know, you get a van full of uh, native guys pull into a border stop, especially on the U.S. side. And we'd get hassled. They'd, you know, they'd stop us. They'd go through our gym uh, strip bag looking for parts of eagles and feathers and whatnot. Uh, it, was, uh, it, it was harassment, not all the time, but some of the time. Or they would just give us a tough time. And some of the times, uh, uh, just to be ornery, when they said, you know, okay, citizenship, uh, some of the guys on the team would say Blackfoot. And uh, of course that didn't go anywhere because you had to be Canadian or you had to be American, that was it. And I began hearing stories about families who would go across to the American side, back and forth, who were sort of hassled in the same way. And I'd heard a story about uh, uh, a mother who had insisted on Blackfoot as citizenship, which she had every right to do. And, uh, you know, the hassle that she went through. And uh, she got across, but uh, still, you know, it just nonsensical hassling. So I started thinking, well, what happens if you had a, you know, a family or a mother and a son, a mother and a daughter who tried to get into the U.S. and got to the border and said Blackfoot rather than Canadian or American? And the Americans wouldn't let her in. And then she had to turn around and go back to the Canadian side. And when the Canadian folks asked her citizenship, she said Blackfoot. And they wouldn't let her in. Well, uh, between coots and sweetgrass on the Canadian-American uh, border, uh, there used to be a distance between the two border shacks, and it was a duty-free parking lot. And so I thought, you know, well, now they're stuck in uh, sort of no man's land, no person's land in this parking lot with the duty-free shops. They can get some food and they get, you know, water and whatnot, but they're, they're stuck in between these two countries that think that they own native people. And uh, I wrote the story with that in mind, this, this sense not just of identity, but of being able to, uh, to say who you are. And, uh, and this uh, sense of entitlement that, uh, that Canadians and Americans think they have, especially over native people. And so it's a funny story. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, everything that can go wrong does go wrong. They wind up having to stay a couple of nights in the duty-free parking lot because they can't go get into the States or get back into Canada. Uh, there was an old story my mother used to like to tell me. I hated the thing. It was called A Man Without a Country about this guy who 
declares he no longer wants to be an American. So they put him on a ship and they put him out at sea and he stays out at sea for the rest of his life. It's one of those, you know, if you're bad, this is what's going to happen to you. And that was sort of on my mind too when I was writing Porters. But really was this, there's also the sense of loss, uh, this uh, uh, inability to uh, to say who you are. Uh, so that's that really was what the story, what I started off with uh, as an idea for the story. And I wanted to couch it in, in, in comic terms, hu uh, humorous terms, but I also wanted to have that, that undercurrent of, uh, of distress, uh, that undercurrent of kind of, you know, what in the world is going on? Uh, we have so much to worry about and this should not have been a big issue, but it is, and it continues to be a big issue as a matter of fact. Ask any native person who lives on that borderland. Uh, it's, uh, my son just wrote a book actually on the US Canadian border. And we had some conversations about just what that means and historically what's happened in that area. So Borders is a short story and as a graphic novel is just uh, one of those stories. And it's interesting to see it as a graphic novel because it really was a short story to begin with. Everything was in words. Now all of a sudden you have visuals. Uh, I guess I think of graphic novels as uh, an upgrade from comic books that I used to read. But I also remember that many times those books were easier for people to read, to get to, and that that led to other things along the way. So if you read comic books, maybe you'd read a novel. Uh, if you read a novel, maybe you'd read a history book. You know, if you read a history book, maybe you'd write one. Who knows what happens? So uh, it's good to see it out as a graphic novel, and uh, I'll be interested to see what people think of it. Why not upload your writing, your videos, and your ideas to the Creativity Club on the Telling Tales website? Thank you for joining us. See you again.